Today we're going to explore an interesting function. This function looks a little strangely concocted, but it's pretty nice once you unravel exactly what it is. And that function is defined as follows. So it's x minus 1 half plus 1 over pi times the arctan of the cotangent of pi times x. So by arctan I mean the inverse tangent function. Now before we start to uncover what this function is, we'll prove the following observation. And that says that if g of x is continuous on a closed interval a, b, and differentiable on an open interval a, b, where g prime of x is equal to zero for all x on the interval a, b, then g of x is in fact equal to a constant. So in other words, if you have a derivative of zero, then you have a constant function. Okay, so let's maybe see how the proof of this goes. So let's take, I'll call them x1 and x2 from our interval a, b. And so these are chosen maybe freely, except for the condition that we take x1 to be less than x2. Great. So then by the mean value theorem, so let's recall the mean value theorem says that there's always a place where the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change. This occurs for a continuous differentiable function. So we have some number x3, which is between x1 and x2, such that the derivative evaluated at x3 is equal to g of x2 minus g of x1 over x2 minus x1. So again, the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change. But then we've just assumed that the derivative is always equal to zero. So that means that we have this is equal to zero, but then a fraction is equal to zero if and only if the numerator is equal to zero. So that tells us that g of x1 equals g of x2. But now, since x1 and x2 were chosen arbitrarily, that means that this equality extends over the whole interval right here. So in other words, this is a constant function. So we can set this equal to a constant. And then by those words that I've just said, we have g of x equals this constant for all x on the interval a, b. So now that we've got this observation proven, let's go ahead and start investigating our function. Okay, now that we've got this observation proven as a tool, let's start to look at our function. And let's do that by first finding out where this function is continuous. So let's notice that we have discontinuities at the places where this doesn't exist. So where would those be? Those would be where x is an integer. So at all of the values when x is an integer. And you might say, well, why is that the case? Well, notice if x is equal to an integer, maybe we'll call it n, then we have the cotangent of pi times n. That's the same thing as the cosine of pi times n over the sine of pi times n. But the sine of pi times n is equal to zero, though, so that gives us a zero in the denominator here. Well, could we really patch this a little bit to make it work? I think we could, just taking the arctan of plus or minus infinity to be like pi over two or minus pi over two, but I think maybe it's easier just to say that we have this function is continuous on all real numbers minus the integers. So I would write it like that. So that can be written as a union of open intervals. So in other words, it's gonna be continuous on, let's write it maybe like this, zero to one, union, one to two, union, two to three, union, and dot, 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 and then we can push this back in the negative direction as well. So, like I said, an infinite union of 
these intervals. Okay, so again, not only is it continuous there, but it's also differentiable there. And that's just pretty clear by the construction of this function in terms of functions that we know to be continuous and differentiable in this region. So let's maybe insert that. So also differentiable, great. Now, since it's differentiable, let's say that we've got an x, which is on r not including z, and see what the derivative is. So let's take, like I said, x in r minus z, and then note that the derivative of this thing can be easily calculated. So the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of a half is 0, so that goes away. And then we have plus 1 over pi. Then we have to use the chain rule here. So we'll have 1 plus the cotangent squared of pi times x. So that comes from taking the derivative of the inverse tangent. The derivative of the inverse tangent of u is 1 over u squared plus 1. And then the derivative of the cotangent is negative cosecant squared pi x. And then maybe we've also got to multiply by pi, again, because of the chain rule there. So that gives us negative pi times cosecant pi x. But now we can use some trig identities. 1 plus cotangent squared is exactly cosecant squared. So we have that's cosecant squared pi x. That'll cancel with the one in the numerator. This pi will cancel with that one in the denominator, giving us 1 minus 1, which is equal to 0. Okay, so we've got this derivative is always 0 anywhere on our domain. So what does that tell us? That tells us that our function is constant here, it's going to be constant here, it's going to be constant here, and it's going to be constant here. In fact, it's constant on all of these little open intervals that are being used to build this function. Now, it may not be the same constant because whenever we have this discontinuity in the middle, that means the value of the constant should change. But we know that it is constant, at least in this region, maybe a different constant in that region, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's keep up our exploration. So what we've done so far is proven that f is a constant function on the open interval from n to n plus 1 for all integers n. Furthermore, we know that this thing is continuous and differentiable on all of those intervals unioned up. In other words, r minus z or this infinite union, which I've written here. Okay, so like I said, we know it's constant on each of these individually. So let's like take a couple of these examples and find out which constant value they are. But how would we do this? I think the best way to do this is just to kind of pick a nice number between 0 and 1. And what I mean by nice is it plugs into our function easily. So let's here take x equal to 1 half. So that's between 0 and 1. And as we'll see, it plugs into our function nicely. So let's note that f of 1 half will be 1 half minus 1 half, so that's 0, plus 1 over pi times the arctan of the cotangent of pi over 2. So the cotangent of pi over 2 like that. But since the cotangent is the cosine over sine, that gives us the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0, over the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So in the end, this turns into 0. What's the inverse tangent of 0? It's just equal to 0. But since f is constant here, and we found one of its values, that means it's got to be 0 everywhere on that interval between 0 and 1. So let's maybe put that here. This function is equal to 0 everywhere on that interval. Now let's see what's happening here between 1 and 2. So maybe between 1 and 2, we would take x to be equal to 1 and a half. So let's say x is 3 halves. Then we have f of 3 halves. So that's going to be equal to 3 halves minus 1 half. So that's 1 plus 1 over pi times the arctan 
of the cotangent of 3 pi over 2. But again, the cotangent of 3 pi over 2 is equal to 0. So this thing is equal to 0. Arctan of 0 is 0. So we end up with 1 plus 0 or 1. So that tells us everywhere on this interval, our function is equal to 1. And then I bet you can maybe start to see a pattern here. Everywhere on this interval, our function will be equal to 2. Everywhere on this interval, our function will be equal to negative 1, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's maybe summarize this as a little bit of a proposition and prove that. So based off what we saw on the last board, I think we can maybe guess that the following proposition is true. Of course, we'll prove it. And that says for all x between n and n plus 1, f of x is equal to n. So since f is constant on the interval n to n plus 1, we might as well just choose some nice value between n and n plus 1. And inspired by what we saw with our test calculations, let's take x to be equal to n plus half. And then calculate f of x. So that's going to be n plus half minus half because of our first part of our definition here, plus one over pi, and then we have arctan of the cotangent of pi times x. So that's gonna be two n plus one times pi over two, after like putting everything together. But again, reminding ourselves that cotangent is cosine over sine and cosine is equal to zero at all odd multiples of pi, which is exactly what we have here. We see that this is equal to zero. Taking the inverse tangent of zero, we get zero. This one half minus half cancels and we get f of x is equal to n. So that proves this proposition. But what kind of function takes a number between n and n plus 1 and moves it down to the closest in integer? Well, that's my favorite function, the floor function. And that's exactly what we've proven here. So for all x, which is in the real numbers minus the integers, what we've just really shown is that f of x is equal to the floor of x. So this doesn't really work for x and integer, but I bet you could like maybe somehow patch the holes if you really wanted to, although we won't do that here. And that's a good place to stop.